hi everyone welcome to my channel if you're new here welcome back to my channel if you're trying to be a subscriber in today's video i'm going to be filming a video i've never filmed before and that is tbr jar picks my february reads picks my monthly tbr so here's our tbr jar it's not actually a jar it's a little youtube cup that i got when youtube premium became a thing it looks empty trust me there are so many little prompts in here i spent a long time the other day writing them all down and cutting them all out to put in this little kind of enamel cup i don't know what this is anyways we're going to set this here because i want to speak to you about why we're doing this so i am on what the local people around here like to call a book buying ban i have so many books to get through this shelf here this bookshelf this entire thing the books that i haven't yet read this this is my tbr bookshelf yes we have an entire bookcase dedicated to the books i haven't read plus i hate to say it everybody but we have a shelf out in the corridor on my big bookshelf which is my classics non-fiction histfic even i don't even know that's a bit random we've got an entire shelf out there that's also unread books so i'm filming this video in a way to get through my tbr we've got a bunch of prompts in the cup for the most part we're going to be tackling this shelf these are the books that i really want to get through asap there is one book that i absolutely have to read this month and that's because it's a buddy read with my bestie and it is powerless by lauren roberts this book here i'm going away with her to the seaside and we thought it'd be fun for us to take a book with us we could both read at the same time because she's also a book girly i've been watching booktube content for many many years now and this video has always been kind of floating around the internet i do want to mention rachel Catherine, of course who's kind of like brought this video idea kind of back to life and her videos like i love watching them I them every single month as well as countless other people who've also picked up on the idea so uh, this is not an original idea by any means i'm not claiming it to be one at all <laughs> i thought it's a really fun way to get through the tbr i filmed a video in the past where i let a random number generator choose what book i read and that was really successful in the way that i picked up a book i otherwise wouldn't have picked up in quite a few months or even like a year or two so i thought i might be able to get to some books on the shelves that i otherwise wouldn't have picked up had i not been forced to do so by the tbr jar without further ado let's go into the video my fate is in the hands of this tiny little cup let's go okay first prompt i'm genuinely so scared why is that such a scary thing to do oh by the way i didn't say it. i'm thinking about picking out five to six books depending on what we get that's the average of how much i read per month okay we're gonna go with this one it's tiny i'm genuinely so scared what do we have a 2023 release when did powerless come out i'm gonna get my phone and i'm going to google when powerless came out because this would actually be ideal to just take off immediately Paulus Lauren Roberts release date 30th of January 2023 we are so lucky that is so fortunate also today's 31st of January that's kind of crazy this book came out almost a year ago exactly okay we've successfully got the book out without completely destroying the stacks so our first book on the tbr is the one that i wanted to fit in which is amazing and that is powerless by lauren roberts this is a romance book that really took the world by storm it's meant to have kind of like hunger games vibe in that there's a competition it's also heavily inspired by older ya fantasy such as the red queen series which is a series i read like a few years ago and i enjoyed the first book particularly and this book seems to draw a lot of inspiration from that one we're following payden and we're following kai and it's just meant to have the most beautiful romance ever and it's also no which is nice and fun this is quite a thick book it's got some more text it's also 502 pages but it's gonna be a buddy read pretty much certain i'm gonna at least like like this if not absolutely fall in love with it because a lot of people i follow really really adore this one i can't believe i managed to fit the one book i want to read like immediately on the tbr that's so fun okay so first book where should we put this i mean i'm just gonna set it to the side and then i'll show you the stack at the end next prompt that one treated us very very well so i'm scared for what we're gonna get next one of the prompts here is a book over 500 pages which i could have used for powerless so let's just hope we don't get that one this is long a book that starts with the first letter of this month okay so a book starting with f what do we have that's kind of specific now these we've got from luke off with love by mariana zapata that's really thick and i don't really fancy picking it up although it's kind of like a winter romance book and it is valentine's day the month of love which is kind of funny tangent actually i picked out this shirt i just really wanted to wear this shirt for some reason love are you kidding it's perfect okay this is really not going well yeah none of those either anything on this shelf oh my gosh are we gonna have to read from the cover with love i'm acting as though i really don't want to read that book i do it just does intimidate me quite a bit oh my gosh finale this is perfect this is actually so perfect <laughs> why did i get so excited about that okay finale stephanie garber this is the third book in the caraval trilogy this is what i'm going to choose actually like immediately 
this is the one. Not just because Remember the Cobbler of Love is a really thick book. This one is also quite thick. It's another YA fantasy book and it's the final book in the Carol trilogy. I've been meaning to get to this for so long. I think I put it on my October TBR and here we are in February of 2024. Still not having read it. So this is a great one. I reread Carol Bell and I read Bed and Jury for the first time in 2023 and I've been meaning to kind of polish up the series with this final book so I can finally get into the Once Upon a Broken Heart series because the first book in that Once Upon a Broken Heart is on my 2024 TBR. This is perfect. I'm so excited. Carabelle is like a competition, a magical circus kind of vibe and two sisters get invited to it. It's very kind of like exclusive and elusive kind of thing. It gets very kind of trippy and it's a bit like a fever dream. It's a very, very fun universe, very creative world. I'm amazed that Stephanie Garber came up with all of this. It's such an incredible idea. And there's a really lovely romance in it, which we had a lot of in the first book. And I think we're going to see more of finally in this third book. I'm excited. This is so good. And I think I might audiobook this because I think that the audiobook is on Spotify. Two thick books, but I'm, I'm feeling really like positive about this. That one is the one I wanted to get to anyways. A book with a map. Are we going to be doing another fantasy? I don't want another fantasy. Ah, uh, okay, we're gonna try and... I don't know. I don't know what any of these have maps. I think Truly Devious might. Let's see. Yeah, Truly Devious has like a little map illustration of the school, because this is like a YA Dark Athena book. I'm gonna leave that out. I'm just gonna move this book over here. It doesn't fit on the shelf above, which is why it's here. Does the Spiderwick series have a map? There's no map inside, but there's a map on the um end papers we could do the first book in that series that could be kind of interesting i've never read any of the spider book books but i absolutely adore the film which is why i decided to give myself this beautiful kind of bind up illustrated edition oh i don't really want any of these this is like starting a new series that kind of vibe don't want any of those i don't think any of these are gonna have maps and i don't really want anything down here either because these are like thick fantasies and i want to address those unless we absolutely have to so i think what we're going to do is go with the first book in the spider wick Chronicles, which is, what is the first book called? The Field Guide. It's very, very short. It's like 79 pages. So I think this is probably a good one. Like this looks really thick and menacing, kind of terrifying, but it's the entire series in here. So I think we could do the first book in the Spider Book series, which is actually really good because again, this is like a perfect example of a book that I wouldn't have picked up this soon had I not had like a novel the choice basically. So we're gonna go with that book number three. Book number four, that, that prompt like stressed me out. <laughs> okay. A book I'm planning on annotating. Okay, that's interesting. I mean, but I basically annotate any book that I either like, I've annotated the first book in the series and I know I'm gonna keep the series for real, or a book that I'm like 99% sure I'm gonna love. So let's just have a look at the stacks. Hmm. So we've got three fantasy books so far. So maybe I'll do a romance or a lit fic or something like that. <sighs> Which of these would I annotate? This is a really interesting prompt. I'm kind of thinking maybe submarine we'll get this one out if i can but this stuff's gonna fall on my head one day submarine i am going to quickly look at my photo of the, my bookshelves out in the corridor in case there's any of those that i feel like might be a better choice for this one why is my phone literally frozen um yeah i don't want any of these i think we're gonna go with submarine submarine is a book that was actually adapted into a film. I've got the film cover here. I watched the film for the first time, I think it was in November of 2023, and I loved it. It was like a 4.5 film for me, but like, you know on Letterboxd, you can give films like a heart. It got a heart, so it's like a favorite film, but there was just something slight that I didn't, it didn't give me like a five star feeling, but it was so close to being there. It was a beautiful film. I actually originally picked it up because Alex Turner from Arctic Monkeys wrote the soundtrack, which is a horrible thing to have to admit. It was great. Like. It's annoying that he wrote the soundtrack actually because I would love to love the film without it seeming that I have a bit of a bias towards it. But yeah, we're following Oliver Tate. He is a teenage boy. It's kind of like a coming of age novel. It's about his parents' relationship, him convinced that there's something going on between them, like as in like one of them cheating on the other or something like that. He thinks they're breaking up. And then it's also about him personally, his personal life at school where he's like a little bit bullied. I'm just talking about the film by the way, not sure how like accurate of an adaptation it was. But it's also about his like little romance. And it's just a really beautiful story, beautiful film. It's also very, very funny. It had me laughing out loud. And I've decided to read the book. Let's see how many pages this is. 280, no, 290. Okay, under 300 pages. I feel like this is a really good one to add to the stack. And it's definitely one that I want to annotate because I love the film so much. And I also did buy the movie cover because it's got a turn his name on the back which is another point we're gonna swiftly move on from but yeah that's book number four so prompt number four so we've got one more prompt okay we're gonna go with this one from a favorite author this is kind of fun this is a fun prompt who's a favorite author okay i've only read one book but i loved 
flawless but also silver so i also saw this like a little bit fave because it's like one of the few romance books i've ever loved in my life we've got taylor jones reads big tjr fan we've got neil schusterman but i don't really fancy reading with toll because she's thick we've got lee Bardugo, although she's kind of a 50 50 with me because i loved the six crows duology really just like some of the integration trilogy and I found that like Night House was kind of middle of the road for me in terms of my enjoyment. So maybe not her. We could do Catwoman by Sarah J Maas. This is really tricky. Do we have any on the other shelves? I've got lots of authors on my bookshelves that I haven't actually ever read from before. We've got some Daphne du Maurier, which is one of my favorite authors. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna get my two options out. Okay, so our two options are Heartless by Elsie Silver, which is the second book in the Chestnut Spring series. Like I said, I loved Flawless and I feel like if this author has managed to get me to like one of her books and it happens to be a contemporary romance book that i feel like we're gonna have a pretty good thing going i definitely want to continue the series i'm very excited as you can see i own like the entire series basically except for the final book so it's definitely one that i want to pick up soon but do i want to pick it up in february wait oh my gosh there was one other book i wanted to fit on this tbr and i just remembered it and i realized it fits with this prompt we'll get to that in a second the other book we have is catwoman's soul stealer by sarah Mass. sarah Mass wrote the ectos series throwing glass series i love the ectos series my favorite series of all time so arguably she's one of my favorite authors this is one i picked up in the charity shop it's a standalone it's just under 400 pages it could be fun because it's so different but at the same time i don't really feel like this kind of vibe i don't know it just gives me like awesome winter vibes and february just feels fresh and like we're getting towards spring book is just not giving so i think we're gonna do the other book that i really want to read and that is mr wrong number by lim painter i've only read one lim painter book before but i loved it it was better than movies it was my third favorite book of last year it was absolutely like solid five star read for me for my birthday in july i got gifted love wager and then recently i bought myself mr wrong number because it was on the 99p like kindle deal i was like which book do i read first and then i found out that they're actually in like a little companion series you don't have to read them but they're like interconnected standalones and you're meant to start with mr wrong number so i really want to read that one also just like feb gives me limp pain vibes because her books are just like light-hearted beautiful rom-coms so much fun and i would say that like even though i've only read one book by her she's definitely like already a favorite author so we're gonna go with mr wrong number also just like the most solid definition romance i feel like could be good i don't know anything about what that book's about should we maybe google it things get textual when a steamy message from a random wrong number turns into an anonymous relationship in this hilarious rom-com bad luck has always followed olivia or maybe she's just the screw-up her family thinks she is that's kind of relatable but when a what you are wearing what what but when a what are you wearing text comes from a random a lot but when a what are you wearing text from a random wrong number turns into the hottest most entertaining albeit anonymous relationship of her life she thinks things might be on the upswing colin has always considered Livia his best friend's annoying little sister but when she moves in with them after one of her worst runs of luck he realizes she's turned into an altogether different and sexy distraction he's sure he can keep his distance and some he discovers she's the irresistible miss, miss dial he's been sort of sexting for weeks and now he has to decide whether to turn the heat up or to go to her before things get messy this is hilarious so they're having this like anonymous conversation and at the same time they actually know each other IRL and she is his best friend's little sister kind of fun also adults that's what the synopsis is giving me like that is an adult book I'm really happy with this TBR it's kind of not what I expected also completely like managed to fit in books I really want to read so I feel like this is a really good time I'm just gonna put these other books back and then we'll run through what the prompts were and what books I chose from them I dragged over this little stool that sits in the corner of my room with no purpose I just bought it because it was really cute but I thought we could stack the books here so you could see what we've chosen to read for the month prompt number one was a 2023 release and we chose Palace by Lauren Roberts Prompt number two was a book that starts with the first letter of the month that we're currently in and I chose Finale for February by Stephanie Garber. Prompt number three was a book with a map and I chose the first book, oh gosh, the first book in the Spiderwick Chronicles which is called The Field Guide by Tony Dittalizzi and Holly Black because there is indeed a map in here, albeit on the end papers of this book. Very, very fun. You can't even see these. Can you see these? I'll hold them up in a second. Prompt number four was a book I'm planning on annotating and for that I chose Submarine by Joan Dunthorne. I'm hoping to love it just as much as I love the film. And prompt number five was a book from a favorite author and I chose Miss Wrong Number by Lynn Painter, which we're reading on the Kindle. So there we have it. There is my little February TBR. We've got some chunky books, but we also are not reading too many of them. So I think it could be a fun one. I'm really excited about the kind of mix of genres and things like that. And I'm so happy to have been able to squeeze in like a little romance book because although these books, pretty much all other than like one of them have romance subplots, it's fun to be reading like a true romance book in the month of love. I'm very, very excited about them all. I think they could all be, this could be like a really good month. I'm really, really happy with my picks. I don't know. It just, it also seems like very achievable because this one is like such a short little story. 
not story but like is like a middle grade finale i'm gonna audio book a bit of powerless will be my kind of main focus for the month as well as reads that i didn't get to too much in january because there are a couple of books that i read in january that i have not finished yet <sighs> one of which is House of Glamour. So I'm like 200 pages into that and it's like an 800 page book. So I think we have quite a way with that one to go. But there you go. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you find that you did, you can give it a thumbs up to let me know. I had such a fun time with this. It's actually so much more fun than I thought it would be. Watching other people is always assumed this would be kind of fun, but like doing it, it's like this perfect mixture of like stress and like excitement and anticipation. I'm thrilled. Yes, I would love to do this in the future. Maybe not every single month, but if you enjoy it, then maybe we will be back for March. We'll see. I'll let you know how I find these books in my wrap up for the end of February. But for now, I'm going to leave you in peace. And if you choose to stick around, I'll see you in a couple of days for another video. Bye bye.